Hello everybody, how's it going today? My name is Connor and welcome back to another video. Today I am back, going to talk about my latest project that I've been working on. I've been kind of wrapping up on code again. Uh, just kind of, you know, took a little break for a little bit again. I kind of burnt myself out again. I think that we're operating in these patterns where it's like I just, I go and go and go and go and go and then I burn out and then I have to stop. But, um, yeah, anyway, this is just, you know, an, an updated video. Just tell me what I've kind of been working on, kind of just picking up this project just recently. Um, but hopefully someone can learn something from it. And yeah, so uh, what I'm doing is I'm creating a game engine this time around. It's called Weaver. Uh, I don't know if there's another game engine or a project out there called Weaver, but uh, I'm calling it Weaver. That name is subject to change. Um, and I'm creating it from scratch, uh, basically just to learn how they work, you know. Um, I want to make it kind of similar to something like Unreal or uh, Unity or Godot, uh, you know, in the future where it has like an editor. Um, and I'm also basing it on a entity component system um, architecture, kind of, kind of similar to like Bevy, uh, which is another Rust game engine that I'll leave a link to down in the description um, in the list of, list of references for this project. But yeah, so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm creating a game engine um, from scratch, again, to learn how they work. And uh, it's kind of in the early stages right now. Uh, I, I kind of want to do a different video format for this project. And, uh, you know, excuse me if I'm a little rusty on the narrating part. I'm just trying to get my words out and just... You know, I haven't done this in a while. <laughs> so, uh, excuse me for the ums and the, you know, the you knows, you know. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, I'm just trying to work on that. So, what I want to do with this project is, typically with my projects, I start making videos for them after I get them basically mostly working. And it's just more of like a showcase of what I've done rather than a devlog of what I'm doing. So... Uh, with this project, I want to start earlier in the in the in the uh, development process, right? I want to um, kind of start at the beginning and just kind of talk about how I built this thing up from the, from the beginning. Because this is going to be a much larger scale project than what I worked on before. Um, besides maybe Catos, my operating system that I created, we can look at look at that video if you want to see what I made there. But um, yeah. So anyway. Uh, just basically, I'm just gonna like, kind of, whenever I get something working, I'm just gonna try to make a video about it. So, I try to manage my time better so I don't burn out. And, yeah, that's about it for that. So, um, what are my design features when it comes to this, op this, I almost said operating system, when it comes to this game engine? First things first is I want it to have a very robust uh, entity component system or architecture or entity, C entity component system design. I don't know what the proper terminology is there, but uh, basically an ECS ent entity component system. What that means is that um, the data of the game, of the game engine, is separate from the logic of the game engine. And so you have these components in an in the ECS architecture. You have these components that contain the data, the stuff of the entities, which are the things that have the components. So, like for example, you have a component that's like the health of the player, you know, or the health of the health of anything, really. The components don't care what entities are assigned to, and um, the entities, you know, they, yeah. So they're just like a they're just like a uh, identifier for a collection of components, right? So, um, so you have a health component that could be attached to a player, but the health component could also be attached to like an enemy or you know an npc of some sort you know so um and then you have these systems that operate on the components and so the systems can um can do things like change the components with uh, what we call a mutable query um and they can access components with an immutable query just like a read-only query um and so uh, so you could use a system to do something like, you know, if the query for the input component 
is the, the button's clicked, then shoot a thing from the player's gun or whatever, you know? Like, and, and if, if, if a bullet hits, you have a system for, like, if a bullet hits uh, a NPC or an enemy or whatever, reduce the enemy's health by one, you know? So you would have a query for the um, for the health and for the physics and the collision detection and all that in, in that kind of system, right? So hopefully that's that's easy to visualize. Uh, let's actually um, go over the code for the ECS right now. Um, so it's actually not being used. This is more of a Bevy thing that I was inspired by Bevy. Um, but anyway, yeah, so you have, first things first, you have the world, right? And the world will contain components and will contain systems. <clears throat> Uh, for now, at least. This is just what it has for now, you know. Um, and so the components are actually being stored in a hash map uh, of what entity has what collection of components, right? A, a back of RefSolve component. So um, let's take a look at what these do as well. The entity is really just a simple wrapper around a U U32. Uh, inside 32-bit integer is just an identifier and it has a special placeholder one that I can use. Um, the component itself uh, contains a few things. It's a name that I can be identified by, which is just a string. I, I might be turn this into a new type at some point, but for now it's just a string. Um, it has the entity that it's a part of, and it has fields. So this is where um, my um, sorry, my phone went off. This is where my implementation of an ECS might differ from something like Bevy. So Bevy is what I would call like a more of like a game framework, where it you just kind of hard code in um, all of the logic for your game, and there's no real scripting or involved, or no editor, external editor that you can like change the logic or whatever, or change the components or whatever. You have to code them all in Rust. So um, that brings me to another design feature of, or you know, eventual goal that I want to have for my game engine is I want to have an editor so that you can don't have to write any Rust in order to use my game engine. Um, so I, in order to facilitate that, how Bevy would do something like a component, you would do like you know derive component, and then you have like you know, yeah, you know, just let you know. GitHub Copilot fill fill that in, but like you know what I mean, right? Like you would do like a, a struct like this, and then its fields would be defined in the struct statically in the code, right? So, but if I want to have something that can be defined at runtime, like with an editor, um, then it needs to be runtime definable, right? So, um, what I'm doing is I'm I'm instead of having like a component trait that I can just write a proc macro for and like Bevy does, where you can derive, derive a component from a struct, I'm actually just having a, a component struct, and then all of its fields are actually definable at runtime. So, um, so I have the, like this field enum with like all different field types. Uh, there's probably gonna be more later on. We'll see. Um, this might not end up working in the end, but it's worse for now. So I'm going with it. Um, and so, yeah, this is like a generic like component struct for like any of these types of fields, right? So, um, maybe an add a field, we can do all kinds of stuff with the fields. So, that's what component does. And then, so yes, the, the world has a map of entities to their respective list of components. Uh, and then we have the systems. And systems uh, work a little specially. Um, don't need that. Um, so, how a system interfaces with the world is through what's called queries. So remember, the system is something that acts upon the components. But we, we need to know what components the system needs to access, or else we're just going to have the entire access to the entire world for every system, and that's not very efficient or very memory safe, you know? Because we could have something that will uh, modify one part of the world, and then you can only have, you can only borrow the world once 
at a time in Rust, or else you have aliasing issues, you know? So, um, so what we have is we have this query system. So it's kind of a mess right now, but um, we can have immutable and mutable uh, queries. And the, 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 the string parameter here is just uh, the name of the component, like defined in here, the name of the component, um, where they uh, that they were trying to access, right? You know, either immutably or immutably. Uh, either we can change it or we can only do read only, you know? So, um, and then we have the resolve queries, which uh, I'll get into that in a sec. Um, we have system logic, which is just a little wrapper around like a, an actual Rust function. The static system logic is just a Rust, fun <coughs> a Rust function like over here, like a test system over here, you know? Um, just so I can test it out. Eventually I want to add like, you know, script, you know, like have my own like scripting language for this game engine or something. I don't know. Kind of like Godot does. Um, but for now, I'm just going to let it be defined in Rust, kind of like Bevy does. Um, and then, yeah, and then we have the queries that it, that it accesses. So, yeah. I'm just going to get my bearings here. It's, yeah, okay. So what we do when we want to update the system, when we want the system to run, basically, is we, for every query that we have, we, we try to get a resolved query from the, um, what's it called? We try to get a resolved query from the world. So that's the this is world.query function, which we'll go into over here. Now, this is probably the most complicated part of this, but it's really not that complicated. So, because the queries, sorry, because the components are stored in ref cells, as you can see up here, they're stored in ref cells, uh, that means we can runtime borrow these, borrow check these, I mean. Um, so, what this code basically does is it just, uh, depending on if it's a mutable or immutable query, we just do, we just iterate over the, all the components, all the entities and all the components in the um, world. And if the name matches the component that we're trying to query, then we borrow it and we get a ref of it, right? So you see, it's a, it's a ref of component because that's what the ref soul does when you borrow it, right? It has a lifetime associated with it and everything. Um, and then for the mutable borrow, for, for mutable query, we just borrow mutably instead. And so this enum of the resolve query allows us to use the same you know, function for both types of queries. So that's really cool. And then when we want to update the world, we just, for all our systems, we just run it on the world. So, uh, and the system update, yeah. So we query the world. Uh, if the query was a match, then we push it to our list of, you know, resolved queries. And then we run the logic for the system with those queries. So pretty straightforward, I'd say. Um, very, very, very basic entity component system. This is very bare bones. This is kind of the minimum of what I need in order to get something working, you know. Um, with this, I can add a statically defined, you know, render system to um, to things and be able to, um, you know, start working on the renderer, which is the next thing that I want to implement for this project is I want to make my own 3D renderer from scratch, just using a frame buffer and math, basically. So uh, that's probably what the next video is going to be about, unless I end up working on the ECS some more. But yeah, anyway, this is just, I just want to make this a quick and dirty video just to uh, start documenting this process before I work on it some more. That might feel better about working on it some more <laughs> without making a video about it, you know? So anyway, yeah, that's what this is. Uh, I'm going to try to upload more often again, just as I'm working on this project as I go. I've been very like busy lately, I, like in real life and with my social life and all that. So um, I haven't had a little time to work on code, but I'm, I'm on top of feeling burnt out, right? So but anyway, that'll be it for me for today.
Uh, I think that's all I want to talk about. Yeah, if you like this video, please hit, leave a like. If you want to see more of my project progress and see what else I'm cooking up um, over here, then leave a subscribe. Uh, and I, if you really like what I'm doing and you want to support me a little bit, leave a super thanks or a super comment or whatever that's called these days. And uh, yeah, that's about it. I will see you in the next one. Thank you. Peace out.